Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be solving uh, another question which is equal them all. So let's read the question. Claudia gave Arif an array n of n integers and asked him to make all the elements equal by doing certain operations any number of times, possibly 0. The operations are Arif can either double or triple an element of the array. He can do the operation on the element any number of times. Okay, so the question is we will be given an array of size n and then we can perform these two operations any number of times. First is that you can either double or triple any element and then you can do the same operations any number of times on any of the elements. So those are the only two operations that Arif can perform and we need to make uh, Arif, okay, Claudia asked Arif uh, to make all the elements equal by doing these things, okay. So, and the output is print, yes, if it is possible to make the ele elements equal or no, okay. So, here is the input format. The first is will be given n as the, the length of the integer, so length of the array and then the second line contains the n separated integers and you have to print yes if you can actually make all the elements equal by doing these two operations no if you cannot make the array elements equal so let's take a look at the input we have first input as 4 and then we have 75 150 75 and 50 essentially how you can perform so okay let's go to our editor we'll try to key in our numbers Hello. and then we need to make this array into something equal which is okay so the first and the third elements can be double so according to our answer the answer is yes for this or yes because the first and the third elements can be doubled if you do it double times, you can get a 150 out of this, like 2 times x and then x is 2 times, you're going to get a 150 and then this is already a 150 and obviously you can always make this as 150 by a fourth element double and then triple, yeah, you can make it double, this will become 100 and then you can into 100 and you can triple it times so eventually you will end up with 150 triple times is going to give you 300 sorry my bad it's going to give you 300 and you can multiply these guys into two times double times you'll get eventually 300 so 300 300 300 and 300 the reason why we went to 300 is because you cannot make 150 out of 50 by making 2 times or 3 times. So, if you multiply 3 to that, it would be, oh, even we can make it 3 times, right? But here we said the first input, first and third is double, second is double once. So, yeah, actually we are aiming for 300. So, that is how the very first input is saying, answer is yes let's go to the next one if the input was 100 150 250 if the input was uh, 100 150 and 250 i guess yes 150 and 250 the answer is no because you can never end up with any of the numbers so let's try making this double you can get a 200 but you cannot make 150 to 200, correct? So, you can either make the double of it, which will be 300. You cannot make a triple of 300 via this. So, again, this double times, you're going to get a 500. But, again, you make it like multiply by 3 times, it will be 600, which you cannot achieve via 500 the double times it will only be 1000 so there is no combination of making double or triple or performing the same operation n times you can never get any of these numbers to one equal number there is no one equal number so there is a cross 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 so three crosses so that's the reason answer is a no so i'll be giving a thinking pause so that you guys can go ahead and form your own algorithm 
and post that we'll discuss the algorithm okay so let's go back to the question so uh, we will just see what are the operations again so he can do either double or triple any any element of the array and he can do so we'll say the very first thing is you can do a 2x okay two times second is you can triple it and then third is can perform n number of times these two operations you can perform n number of times on any of the a of i any of the element on the array but eventually you want all the elements to be the same so that's the only uh, output if you can able to make it you can always do it if not if not so at any given moment in time there are so many possibilities so we could have done this n or you can could have taken this the very first element multiply two times and go on and check multiply this two times and again go and check this two times so so if you have something like this if you have 75 150 and 100 let's assume so you could have one possibility is like you could have done this 2x times and then you would have done the rest of the elements like if you have 150 again you have 100 correct these guys as 2x times or this guy as 3x times again this guy have again 2x times this guy has again 3x times after making this 2x you can again would have gone to like 75 again make that again 3x so on and so forth the tree is actually increasing because there are so many possibilities you can have so let's say this is 3x again this guy will again have 100 and 150 so which you could have performed 2x times and 3x times again this could have performed 2x times and 3x times so if you are actually going above and above this this tree you know it's going to be very big and could be infinite also because there's always a scope because when you're going a uh, climbing up there is no limitation saying this is the last number in the in in our integers right so there are actually a lot of numbers so here is the crux to this question or what i can say is a trick to the solving this type of question is rather than climbing up how about you climb down so what we are doing right now here in this uh, question is you are actually making multiply you're going up you're saying that I'll, I'll i'll go for a higher extent and see where these guys are actually matching so rather than you would have also gone a lower lower bound right how about you would have divided these numbers uh because if the number is getting equal at some point on an upper bound there is a very high possibility that the, the numbers will also be equal at the lower bound. If any of these numbers are getting divisible by 2 and 3, uh, sorry, multiplying by 2 and 3, you can perform the same operation by dividing, correct? So, what my point was is, so we'll take again the same example of the 75, 150 and 100. Let's say that you have 75 and then you have 150. Okay, let's take 150. So, can I divide this by 2? No. Can I divide this by 2? Answer is no. Can I divide this by 2? Answer is yes, I can divide. So, this would be 7 times 14 and 1, 75. So, if you see, these numbers are actually getting equal. If you divide only this by 1s. So, you have 75 and 75. Perfect. Now, let's go back. You have one more 75 and 50. So, again, one more 75 is a doable thing. But, you have a 50 as your fourth number. So let's go ahead and see can you divide it by 2? Yes, you can. You can make it divide and you can say 2 to the 4 and then 1, 5, 25. So again, the one number is not matching. So let's continue our process and check if any of these remaining numbers are divisible by 2 or 3. Here you say 75 divided by 3. Let's make 75 divided by 3 because it's not divisible by 2. So we call it this 2 times 6, 1 times 15 and then you get 25 so 75 you divided by 3 you get 25 so all will be 25s 25 comma 25 comma 25 comma 25 eventually you'll end up with 25 so one way of this thing is you multiply and you go on to the upper bound or the other way is you can do a division and you come back to the lower number 
here it was never asked to which number you are equaling to but it is only asked can you perform any of these operations make all the numbers equal is it even possible the, the point was never whether the can you get a target of x or y or something it was only asked whether you can do it or not do it so since it's only yes or no even though here saying the double and triple you can also also perform the opposite uh, action that is division you are that you are actually getting it half or getting three pi so that's one thing let's Take the other example and see how it is not going to work. 100, 150, and 250. So we have uh, one more question like 100, 150, and 250. So all of these numbers are actually divisible by 2. So you go ahead and you divide it by 2. You say I have a 50. You go at 2 and you say I have 75 over here. And then here 2, I'll say 1, and then 50 is again going to be 25. I have a 125. Again, 2 is divisible by here. So, 2 will say it's 25. But 3 is here. You can divide it by 3 and you say you have 25. Again, 3 is divisible here. And you say 3 divisible is... Um, 3 is actually not divisible by 125. So, 125 is the smallest number. Since you do not have any smaller number equaling and 2 and 3 are not divisible, that means that even if you multiply n number of times, you can never achieve the same number with this particular integer. So, that's the reason the answer for this is no, because you have 125, which is a blocking. So, that is our uh, way of solving this. So, that's the algorithm. I'll just reiterate the algorithm. Instead of multiplying, what we're doing is dividing and getting the numbers to the lower bound. So, you divide it by 2 and 3 and then you check eventually if all the numbers are same or not. If they are same, you print it yes. If they are not, you print it no. Okay. So, let's quickly go ahead and code it out. We will be having an n. We'll read the input. Now, what we are doing is we will be checking if that particular number is actually divisible by 2 or not. So, as long as it is divisible by 2, we are going to make that number smaller. Okay. The same thing we will be doing for 3. And now, we are going to check if all the elements are same or not. We will have a flag in place which will be telling if it is actually breaking our condition anywhere. We will be checking for the next number, so we need to put a minus 1. If any moment in time a of i is not equal to the next element, that means you have two different, two different values. So, that is going to say no, we do not have all the values same. You print a no, you update the flag to 1 and then we break it out then and there. If, if the flag was actually equal to 0, then you say no, it wasn't and you always had the values. That's all, folks. Let's try running this. Which is yes, correct. Let's try submitting. Correct. Accepted. So, a quick summary to our question. Here we had two operations that we can perform to make all the elements equal. That is, you can either double or triple and you can perform the same operation any number of times. So, instead of going to the upper bound and checking if any of the places the numbers are actually uh, equal because that would be a very big infinitary as you can see over here. So, rather than multiplying it, what we are doing is dividing because we know the lower bound eventually if they are divisible by 2 and 3. At any moment in time, if they are the smallest numbers that they 
always can end up with so once you are doing a recursively dividing by twos and threes you are checking if they are all are equal if not you're breaking out and saying no else you're breaking are uh, saying yes so that's all folks thank you